Hello, this is another do-it-yourself video on how to replace a, an outboard steering cable for a bow rider style boat. This one has an outboard, inboard procedure would be very similar. And what I have here is a 1989 Bayliner, 19 foot, and the steering became progressively more and more stiff. And I took the cable out and found that the cable is seized in the sheath. So I ordered a new cable. It was 172 bucks after tax. And uh, really, you, you want to, when you order your new one, there's a model number on your old one that you should read. And uh, <clears throat> typically, beside the, uh, or at the end, it goes to the outboard motor. There will be a number. And so here's the end that goes to the outboard motor. And this is my old cable. And there's a number on there. It's partly worn. It's SSC as in Charlie, 13417. And typically the last two digits are the number of feet. So this cable uh, is uh, actually only about five years old and it failed after just that amount of time. So interesting. So there's the new cable I got today. You can line them up and make sure they're the same. The other thing to check too is the, uh, the bracket that mounts to the, to the hub underneath your dash at the end of your steering wheel shaft uh, obviously that has to line up uh, your new one versus your old one and so there are a couple of different styles this is a rack and pinion style and uh, my new one is exactly the same so that's great so the, the next part of the story is uh, how to get the old one out and it's a little bit tricky um, this outboard is installed on a jack plate uh, which moves it further back from the the stern of the boat about uh, six inches and that actually makes this job even harder because the hole in the hull where the steering cable came out has to feed the steering cable has to go in the center of this little um, shaft or cylinder uh, in the outboard it goes through there and then it comes out the uh, the other side of the outboard <clears throat> and there's a, a steering lever that goes through the steering cable that comes out here and then this steering lever goes in it. So there was a, a, a nut on the end of the steering lever, take the nut off, take the washer off, take the steering lever up, and now the, uh, the steering cable is no longer in control of the outboard. You come back over to this side and you unscrew the nut on the cable, the big, this nut right here. You unscrew that and now you can pull the cable uh, out of the actual outboard and slide it in through the hull and along the, the uh, starboard side uh, the right side of the boat starboard side up underneath the gunnel and then up underneath the steering column so the best thing to do is to detach the cable at the outboard motor end first go underneath the, the dash and remove the four bolts that hold the cable to the uh, to the hub and uh, and then start loosening up all the tie straps that are holding the cable all the way along in the gunnel all the way back to here and once you've got the cable free you just pull the old one out and reverse the process with the new one now I referenced earlier this job being complicated because this outboard has a jack plate <coughs> the uh, the steering cable itself um, it's okay once the steering cable is inserted in here, but to actually get the steering cable out of the outboard, I had to loosen the two bolts on this side to hold the outboard on. And this is 135 horsepower Marin or so. I don't know how many hundreds of pounds it weighs, but probably like 400 pounds. So I loosened these two bolts, but I did not, did not take the nuts off. And then on this side, I removed the two bolts and wedged the two by four between this side of the transom mount and the jack plate and this allows the outboard to no longer be parallel with the boat I've actually moved the transom mount of the outboard like this which makes it much easier to pull out the steering cable so that's uh, that's where I am so far so I'm gonna pause now and put the new one in and then I'll pick up my video a little quick tip here so this is the uh, the stern of the boat and it's where the uh, I'm looking at the hull where the steering cable is supposed to come out uh, of the hull and then go over to the upward motor 
Remember I mentioned earlier that the jack plate is causing a misalignment for the cable and it made it hard for hard to install and remove the cable. I'm, I'm actually taking a, just a drill with a big drill bit, a half inch drill bit here and used it to kind of open up that hole a little bit more in one section. So it'll just provide a little relief for that cable and uh, Anyway, if you if you have a jack plate, that might be something you need to do is is widen this uh, this output hole here in the hull. Okay, carry on. So the next thing I'll show you is uh, I've got the cable through, and uh, and you know the cable slides easy like this, and in there, if you can see very well, right my thumb is pointing at it, the cable sliding there. So that tells me that I'm not binding up. The cable as it goes through the hull. I suspect before I ground out the hull, um, the cable was probably binding, and maybe that's why it had failed prematurely because the the inner cable was rubbing harder on the outer sheath right there. Anyway, at some point I may dis uh, dissect that old cable and see why it was failing. So now that I've got the cable in here, I'm just going to tighten by hand this nut on here, and then use a wrench to snug it up. That doesn't need to be super tight, but you don't want it coming off. I think that's even an aluminum nut, so be careful. And then put the washer on the steering cable first. A little hard to do with one hand. Okay, washer on the on the steering shaft right there where my finger is, and then drop it down into there. And then, okay, so found the other washer. I'm gonna put it on here, and then take this uh, nine sixteenths nut, put it on the end. So now I have a washer on top and on the bottom of that steering cable. So I'll tighten this guy up with a wrench after I shut the camera off. Tighten this guy up and now you're done at the stern end of the boat and you gotta move your way towards the, uh, the gunnel end. I've already fed the new cable underneath the gunnel all the way along I just don't have it tie wrapped up and you can see there it is sticking out uh, I don't have it you know attached underneath the helm yet so I'll do that next okay so now we've got the bolts tightened up on the outboard uh, to get all four of them back tightened up on the uh, jack plate it was a bit of a job um, you know when you hold when you're it's a big motor I mean it's it's I'm five nine and a half and this the top of this motor is touching my nose so it's it's over five feet tall and it's probably anyway it's a big motor when you hold the motor by just the two uh, transom mount bolts on one side the motor has a tendency to twist and instead of being vertical the motor was like that and it made the the starboard side the outboard drop down and I couldn't line up the bolts quite as easily as I had hoped. And so I tried to fool around with pulling the bottom of the outboard towards the starboard side to make the bolt holes line up on the transit mount. And then I experimented with kind of like rotating the engine because if you rotate it while it's touched, the bottom is touching the ground, it should change the position of the transom plate, the transom mount. Um, in the end, what I did was I just took a floor jack put a piece of wood on the top of the floor jack and just to the bottom of the uh, outboard and just ever so slightly jacked it up until the bolt holes lined up. Um, this would probably be easier to do with two people and you could get away without a jack, but that's what I had to do. I'm gonna get myself underneath the helm here and show you what this looks like. So, it's gonna be difficult with a flashlight and a camera, but anyway, there's the uh, new steering cable mount and uh, as you can see, there are teeth there, right? There are teeth there. And those teeth have came pre-greased from the factory with the new cable dip, which is nice. And those teeth mesh. There's the, the steering wheel. Right there's the edge of the steering wheel. There's the shaft. And there's what they call the hub. Now, you notice there's four bolt holes there on the hub. And there are one, two, and then three, four down there. And there are no teeth on this side of the hub, which means the teeth are on the top side of the hub. 
I'm going to shine the light and see if that does anything for you. If you can kind of see those teeth. And as I turn the steering wheel, oh, try to turn it with my forehead, it's not working. But anyway, as I turn the steering wheel, those teeth will spin. And when they mesh with the, uh, with the teeth on the steering cable, the cable moves in and out. Now, um, one thing to note is I've heard the teeth on the hub are made of aluminum and the teeth on the steering cable, well, I don't know what they're made of, but anyway, if you get a seized cable or a sticky cable and you really reef hard on the steering wheel to force that cable to, to, to move, you can damage the teeth on the hub. So very often when people buy a new cable, they buy a new hub with it as well and bolt the new hub on and, uh, and then, you know, they've got a good hub and cable. If you just put a new cable on an old hub that uh, when the hub is damaged, you can have the teeth spin uh, and you know they'll slip and you'll turn the steering wheel and the outboard won't turn or maybe worse you'll hold the steering wheel straight and the outboard will turn so uh, just check the teeth on your uh, on your hub before you go and order your cable you may need to replace the hub i didn't mine is in good shape and uh, it's going to be difficult you should clean the grease off and then use a mirror and uh, inspect uh, inspect your teeth okay so now the cable sitting on there's the cable and it's sitting on top of the hub and then I'm just going to simply put the four bolts in there put them in loose I'm not going to not going to crank them in there tight and then once the bolts are kind of almost snug finger tight I'll shake the uh, this big black metal bracket on the cable I'll shake that uh, you know wiggle it around so that it really seats nicely with the hub and then I'll torque the bolts down all right, so here we are. Steering cable's all tightened up and connected to the hub, and I figured I'd just show you the, the motor turning because that's what the whole job is about, making this thing turn. So you can see that motor rotate, and I just want to show you the effort. It's a one-finger affair. It's not, uh, you know, I'm not using my whole hand. Before I changed this out, I was having to really, you know, two hands. Like, you had to use two strong hands to turn this thing and and uh, it's just obvious to me now how seized that cable really was after I put the new one on uh, okay well good luck with your do-it-yourself project